Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet the Learn to Crochet Mug Rug, which is a free pattern you'll find on MooglyBlog.com. Please go to the link in the description where you will find both right and left-handed video tutorials and links to all the supplies you need. To make this pattern, you'll need about 30 yards of smooth worsted weight yarn. I'm using Red Heart Scrubby Smoothie and Red Heart Super Saver or Lily Sugar and Cream, both widely available, would be excellent substitutes. The main thing is to look for that four on the label. That will tell you it's the right size. Additionally, you do want a smooth yarn, not something with a lot of texture or fuzziness in it so that you can see your stitches. You'll also need a USH five millimeter crochet hook. This one is by Susan Bates and is also widely available. You'll also may want to pick up some stitch markers. These look like tiny plastic safety pins essentially, and we use these to mark our stitches temporarily, which is why they open, so that we can see where we begin and end each row. This will help us get those really straight sides on our mug rug. Now, if you follow the link in the description, right below the videos, there's a link to the written pattern, which is at mooglyblog.com slash learn dash two dash crochet dash mug dash rug. And inside that blog post with that pattern, you'll find links to all the different stitches shown here, the slip knot, the chain, the single crochet, the half double crochet and double crochet, and how to weave in ends. These are all tutorials that you can use to really hone in on each of these skills as needed. I also wanna point out that in this pattern, let me change pages here, there are two versions of each row. So the first version, row one here, you can see it's written out in your standard crochet lingo and terms. Chain 16, skip chain closest to hook, single crochet in each remaining chain across, turn, 15 stitches being the total number of stitches in that row. Underneath that is a version written in more so, at least, plain English. So you can see the row one version here, underneath is make a slip knot, which is something that isn't usually included in written instructions. And then chain 16, and then here you can see, basically I've spelled out all those abbreviations so that they're easier to understand. So again, this pattern is for beginner crocheters and teaching beginner crocheters. So here you can learn how to read that written pattern in standard crochet format with a little bit more explanation as you're getting started. So again, you'll find this written pattern link right underneath the video tutorials linked in the description. So let's go ahead and get started. So here I have the tail end of my yarn, the cut end that I've pulled out of my skein. I'm going to come in about six inches or so from that cut end to make my slip knot. Most crochet patterns begin with a slip knot, although it isn't usually included in the written instructions. To make a slip knot, what we're going to do is take our yarn and make a loop, like so. Again, we've got it flat, we just fold it over here to make a loop. Then we bring that tail end behind the loop we just made, like so. And then we grab that tail right from the center of the loop and we want to pull it up, but we don't want to pull it all the way through that circle. We want to hold on to that tail end and the end attached to our skein and just pull up on that loop that we pulled from the inside there. There we go. And that makes our slip knot. And the great thing about a slip knot is that it is totally adjustable so we can make it smaller so that it fits our hook. And if we don't like it or we've made a mistake, we can just give a tug and it all goes away. So let's make that together one more time. I'm about six or seven inches and from the end of my yarn and I am going to make a loop in the yarn, then pull that tail end behind that loop. And then I'm just going to pinch that end and pull it up right through that loop, making sure not to pull it all the way so that we get our slip knot right there. Then I'm ready to pick up my hook. Now, how you hold your hook is up to you and it's what's most comfortable for you and your hands. There's no right or wrong way. Some people hold it like this, which is considered more of a pencil hold. And some people hold it like this, which is more of like a knife hold. Whatever is most comfortable for you is totally fine. The same thing goes for holding your yarn in your non-hook hand. However you like to hold it. Some people like to weave it between their fingers. I've even known some people who like to run it between their toes. So however you like to hold your yarn and hook is fine. 
It's going to be a little awkward at first and it'll take some practice, but you'll find the hand position that's most comfortable for you. I like to just sort of run the yarn right over my first finger and let the run, rust run back here along my other fingers. This way, if I feel like I need to add some tension and really steady my yarn, I can just grip down on it with these fingers or hold these fingers together. But again, it's whatever is most comfortable for you. After you've got your slip knot made, we want to insert our hook right into that slip knot loop. And then you can go ahead and pull down on those ends to make it just a little bit bigger than the size of your hook. You don't want it to be super big and loose like this because that's going to give you sloppy stitches, but you also don't want it to be super tight up against the hook because then you won't have room to make stitches within that loop there. So we just want to pull it out a little bit so we've got just a little bit of space you can see there between the hook and the yarn loop. And this will take a little bit of practice and that's totally fine. All of these skills take practice and you shouldn't expect to have a perfect project the first time you crochet. So let's go ahead and go to row one. We've made our slip knot and now we're ready to chain 16. To chain, we yarn over, which means we bring the yarn over the hook, over the top from the back to the front. So you can see here's our slip knot on our hook and I'm just going to bring that yarn right over the top of my hook. Then I use my hook to pull that bit of yarn through that loop that we had put on our hook before. And you can see there, that's why we don't want that to be super tight. We need to be able to pull back through there. So right there, that little bit we've made right there, that is our very first chain. What's on our hook doesn't count as a chain, but this right here does. And you can see right at the top, it's got this sort of a V shape. If you look at those two strands, and if I flip it over underneath, sort of pull it apart there so you can see, there is one strand underneath. So that is the anatomy of the chain stitch. So now we've made one chain and the pattern says to make 16. So we need to make 15 more. So to make the rest, we yarn over again and use our hook to pull that loop right through the loop that was on our hook. So now you can see we have two chains, one and two, and they sort of make this stacked V formation as you go. So I find it can be really helpful as you're making a chain to pull down a little bit on those chains you've already made as you make the rest of the chains. It just adds a little bit more tension to the yarn there and make it a little bit easier for you to manipulate the yarn with your hook and fingers. So again, just sort of adding a little bit of tension there to the yarn so it doesn't wanna wiggle around on me. I can pull it over the hook and then pull that hook right through the loop to make a chain. So now we've made three. So now that you've seen how that works, I'm gonna go ahead and make some more. We've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. And you can see there, I took my time and just made each one individually. If you want to go ahead and pause this video and make your 16, that's totally fine. You can also use the gear icon to slow it down or speed it up as needed. So here I have my 16 chains made. And what I want to do is skip the chain closest to the hook and single crochet in each remaining chain across. So you've got a couple options here. Traditionally, when you work into the chain, you would insert your hook under these top two loops and above this bottom loop to work into each of those chains to make your stitches. However, I vastly prefer, and I think it's a lot easier, if we just flip that chain over and start working into those back humps. So if you already know how to crochet a little bit or make a few of those stitches, you can work that however you like. Otherwise, I recommend that you look for those back humps. And those back humps sort of line up in one straight line here. Hopefully you can see that. And I always say it reminds me a little bit of those traditional pictures we see of the Loch Ness Monster. All those little humps hopping up above the water, that's what we're looking for there on the back of our chain. So to continue with row one, we want to skip the chain closest to the hook. So that's that chain right there and start crocheting into the chain after that. The reason we skip this chain is because we're making single crochets here and one chain counts as the turning chain for a row of single crochet. That turning chain acts as a little ladder 
that gets us up to the height of our stitch so that we can step up and then walk across that floor. So we skip that chain closest to our hook and we're going to go to the next chain. We want to insert our hook. Now you'll notice I've still got that last loop on there. We wanna keep that on there and insert your hook from front to back, right underneath that little loop right there, right on the back of that chain. Then you yarn over again. And for some people, yarning over literally means pulling the yarn over the front of the hook. For some people, you use the yarn to grab it, but the end result is the same. You want the yarn coming over the top of the hook, and then you pull that loop right through the loop of the chain. Like so, you can see I've pulled my hook up here so it's nice and even, and I now have two loops on my chain. Then I'm going to yarn over again and pull that loop through both of those loops. And that is how you make a single crochet. So let's take a quick look at our single crochet here. You can see it's got two little legs right in front sticking down into that chain. From behind, it looks a little different. It'll be a little easier to see after I've got a few made. But right on top of that single crochet, you can see again, we've got another one of those little Vs. That is the top of our first stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pull my hook out here for just a moment so I can set it down. Then I'm going to take one of these stitch markers and I'm going to insert it just under that very first single crochet right there, right under those top two loops. And that's going to let me know that when I come back for my next row, that this is that last stitch or first stitch, depending on what side you're coming from, of that row. This will help get those straight sides that we all want in our crochet. So I'll put my hook right back in that loop. And now I'm going to continue to single crochet across. So we go back to our chain, and give it a good look here, take your time with it, and find that next back hump of the next chain right there. And we're going to put our hook right under that loop right there. So you can see those two loops are underneath our hook. Yarn over, pull that loop up and through, pull your hook up to nice and even there, yarn over again, and pull through both of those two loops. So now we've made two single crochets, and we can count those looking at those top Vs, there's one and there's two. Then we can continue on across. Find that next chain, go in there, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two for a single crochet. So we just want to continue single crocheting all the way across our chains here. Now, since we started with 16 chains and skipped the one closest to the hook, we should have a total of 15 single crochets at the end of row one. Now it's going to take you a lot of practice if you haven't single crocheted before to feel comfortable with this. So go ahead and take your time and work on your single crochets and I'll see you as we come to the end of row one of this pattern. Okay, so as you can see here, I've made almost all of my single crochets, but right there, we've got that very last chain right next to our slip knot. And I just want to say this right here is one that you do work into as well. So again, this is where having that first slip knot a little looser is important. And if you need to, you can even pull back a little further on it at this point. So then we can yarn over, get that loop up, yarn over, and now we've got that final stitch. So your slip knot should be right there at the end and you should have a total of 15 single crochets. So let's go ahead and count those together. I'm gonna set my hook aside here. And again, we just wanna look for those little Vs on top. And we've got our first one marked, so that's easy. Then we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So that's how you can count those single crochets. And now you can get a look too, this is what they look like from the front. And that is what they look like from the back. I was thinking of it was a little bit more, a little more dancing from the back. They remind me a little bit of the pie symbol where they're standing apart a little bit there on the legs. Alrighty, so I'll put my hook right back in our loop here and then we're ready to move on to row two. Okay, so for row two, our instructions read CH1, which is chain one, SC, single crochet, in each ST, stitch across. So that reads chain one, single crochet in each stitch across and then turn. So what we want to do is we chain one. 
just like we chained before. So let's do that again. We've got that loop on our hook from our last single crochet. We yarn over with our yarn and just pull it right through, just like the chains we were doing before. This is going to be that little ladder that gets us up to the right height for row two. Then we can turn and we'll be working back across our row one stitches. So what we want to do since we're making single crochets is we're going to go into the top of each of these stitches now to make our next row of single crochets. So if we look at the top of that last stitch there, not the chain, but that last stitch, and we look at it from the front now, since we've turned, this is now our front, you can see a little bit of daylight right there. You can see that little bit, that little space that's right under those top two loops. That's where we want to insert our hook. So right, oops, dropped my loop there. Not a big deal. We just put it right back on our hook. And we want to go right for that daylight with our hook. That's going to put our hook under those top two loops. If I pull them apart here, you can see right under those top two loops of the stitch. So now, just as before, we yarn over, pull up our loop, yarn over again, and pull through two. So now we've got our first single crochet made for row two. So I'm going to go ahead and put a stitch marker in this first stitch again to help us count our row and to help us keep our place. The reason we do this is that we don't accidentally end up skipping that last stitch thinking it's a turning chain or working into one of those turning chains. So then after that, you can simply continue across as you were before, but now of course you're working into stitches rather than into chains. So find that next V there on top, look for that little white space underneath, right under those two loops, put your hook right in there, yarn over, pull up your loop, yarn over and pull through two. Find that space there in the next one, yarn over, pull up your loop, and yarn over and pull through two. So just continue to practice your single crochets all the way across for row two. And the last stitch you'll work in is that one with a stitch marker at the end of row one. Okay, so here I am at the end of row two. So I'm just going to go ahead and put my hook right under those two loops, the same place our stitch marker is. And I can yarn over and pull up my loop and yarn over and pull through two to finish that single crochet. So now, since I've already gotten to the end of this row, I'm going to go ahead and take that stitch marker out. There we are. And I can set it aside for later. I'll go ahead and put it in the first stitch of row three. But let's go back to our written pattern for a minute. We've got, in row two, we have chained one and single crochet in each stitch across. Turn just tells us that we're going to be turning back and forth in rows. So you can chain one for your turning chain and then turn like I just showed you, or you can turn and then chain one, whatever makes you happy. Uh, it doesn't really matter what order you do them in, it's just whatever you prefer personally. So moving on to row three, here's how it's written in standard crochet terms. Rep row two. Rep is short for repeat. It simply means we're going to do the same thing as we did in row two that we did for row three. For row three, it's gonna be the same as row two. So for row three, we'd again, chain one for that little turning chain, and then single crochet in each stitch across. When we turn, you can see, we're just working under those top two loops just as we did for row two. So since you've already seen me do that, let's go ahead and move down to row four. Row four, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to chain one and then HDC in each stitch across. HDC is the abbreviation for half double crochet. So that's a new stitch, but it's just a small variation on the single crochet. And chain one, of course, is again our turning chain. Now this part's a little controversial. Some people prefer to chain two for a half double crochet. I prefer to just chain one. So if you're following other patterns, you may see that handled a little differently, um, but I think this is a great way to go ahead and get started with it. So when you're following a written pattern, you can always follow the written pattern the way it's written. Um, you know, that's what makes all these patterns unique, right? But these are the basic ideas. So let's go ahead and make row four together. I'm going to chain one. And this time, because it's a half double crochet row, I'm gonna pull up on that loop just a little bit before I yarn over and pull through. I want this chain to be just a hair taller than the chains I might've made before. Don't have to make it big and crazy, just a little bit extra room in there. Then I'll turn, or I may have already turned, and then it's time to half double crochet in each stitch across. The half, half double crochet is very simple, similar to the single crochet, but before we insert our hook in that first stitch, we're going to do a yarn over. 
So we yarn over just as we've done before, but instead of just pulling that on through, now we're going to go through that stitch. So you can see we've got our initial loop and now this yarn over loop on our hook. So then we insert our hook right in that very first stitch, just as we did before, under those top two loops, yarn over again, and pull up that loop. Now you can see we've got three loops on the hook. So we're going to yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. And a good tip for that is after you've done your yarn over, point the pointy part of the hook down towards the base of your stitches before you pull through. That helps keep it get caught helps keep it from getting caught rather on some of these loops. Sometimes it still gets caught anyway, but it's just a good tip to help it pull through a little smoother. Now that I've made that first stitch, I'm going to go ahead and put my stitch marker in it. Just like the single crochets, we're looking for that top V. Those two loops are at the top of our stitch. So that's what we put our stitch marker under to mark it. And now we've got our first half double crochet made. So let's make some more of those together. I'm gonna pull up a little bit more yarn from my skein of yarn here. There we are. We always wanna have it a little bit loose here so you're not getting a lot of tension from the ball itself. And let's make our second half double crochet. We're going to yarn over, insert our hook right into that very next stitch under those top two loops, yarn over again, pull up our loop, pull those loops all up so they're nice, nice and, you know, they don't wanna to be too squished down to the fabric here. We want a little bit of room. We've got three loops on our hook, we yarn over, and pull through all three of those loops. And now we've made two half double crochets. So you can see these are a bit taller than a single crochet. Each stitch takes up a little bit more room. It's got a little bit more going on there. There's that yarn over loop creates that horizontal bar sort of in the middle of the stitch there underneath our top two loops. So we yarn over, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and yarn over and pull through all three. And that's the only variation really there is for that half double crochet. It still creates a really nice solid fabric. So yarn over, go into the next stitch, yarn over again, pull up a loop, and yarn over and pull through all three. So go ahead and practice your half double crochets all the way across for row four. Okay, so here we are, we've come to that last marked stitch. So I'm going to go ahead, insert my hook in there. And if you find there's not room, but the stitch marker is taking up too much room, you can go ahead and pull that out before you make your stitch, whatever works for you. But we're going to do the same thing, pull through all three and finish that row of half double crochets. So then I would take that stitch marker out there because we don't need it anymore. And now we've got our 15 half double crochets. And you can see from the top, we've still got those nested Vs and those are what we count to count those stitches. So if we go back to our pattern here, we can come down here to rows five and six. We just finished row four. Rows five and six, rep row four. So repeat row four. We do the exact same thing. Chain one and a half double crochet in each stitch of the previous row. So we would continue and do what we just did for the next two rows. Then we come to row seven, where we're going to introduce a new stitch. We chain three, which counts as our first stitch, and then DC, which is double crochet in each rem remaining stitch across before we turn for the next row. So let's go ahead and make row seven together. Now, row seven begins with a chain three. That chain three is going to count as our first double crochet of the row, and that is a pretty standard way of handling double crochets. That said, there are lots of other ways that you might encounter in patterns later but this is the most basic way. We've got our loop from our last stitch here in our previous row, and we're going to chain three. So these are just like the chains we were making before. We're gonna yarn over and pull through. There's one, two, three. Three chains, and these are going to count as our first double crochet of the row. This is just, it's a little different than what we've been doing before. It's still our turning chain, our little ladder that lifts us up, but it's also going to be that first stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and take my stitch marker and now I really want to try and get it under those top two loops of that last chain we made. Not the one that was on the hook, but the one that we made right, uh, the last one we actually made right there. So I've got my stitch marker right in there. So that's gonna work as our first stitch. Now we're gonna turn and work back the other direction. Get my hook right back in there. 
And because that chain three counted as our first double crochet, we're not going to put a stitch right in the top of that first stitch here. Because if we did that, then we'd be adding a stitch and we'd have 16 stitches instead of 15. So since this is the first one, we need to skip that little space right there and come to the next one for our first double crochet. So to make a double crochet, it's just a variation on the half double crochet. We yarn over just as before, go into the stitch, the next stitch or indicated stitch, wherever you're supposed to go, right under those top two loops, just as before, yarn over, pull up our loop, and we've got our three loops on the hook, but this time, when we yarn over, we're only going to pull through the first two, stop with two loops left there on the hook before we yarn over and pull through those two. So you can see now that gave us a really tall stitch. So the single crochets were short, the half double crochets were sort of a medium, and now we've got a really tall stitch with the double crochet. I'm gonna pull up some more yarn from my yarn ball here and we'll do a few more of those together. So let's make another double crochet. We're going to yarn over, find that very next stitch of the row, insert our hook under those top two loops of that stitch, yarn over again, pull up a loop. We now have three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through two, stop again, yarn over, and pull through two. Let's make another one. We yarn over, Insert our hook in the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. So that is our double crochet. Now you can see there's a little bit of gap there when we don't work that first double crochet in that very first stitch, but we just have that chain three as our first double crochet. And again, that is standard with this technique. I think that's why people have invented other meads to start those rows, but for now, when you're learning to crochet, this is the method that you learn first. So let's continue on across. Yarn over, go into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two for a double crochet. So continue to double crochet all the way across here for row seven. Okay, so I'm at that last stitch of the previous row. So I'll go ahead and put my final double crochet right in there for our row seven. There we are. And then I can go ahead and pull that stitch marker out of the way. So there is our row of double crochets. You can get an idea how they are a much taller stitch. There's a little bit of space there, a lot more sunlight in between around what we call the posts of the stitch. We've got the top of the stitch, the two loops up here, and then this is the post of the stitch, the part that sticks down into the next stitch below there. And that is what your double crochets should look like. Now, if we come back to the written pattern, you can see row eight is rep row seven. So exact same thing, chain three and work your way across. The final stitch, remember, will be under those top two loops of that chain three. So let's continue to read through here and we'll make another row together because I do want to demo how to work into the top of that chain three. But at this point, you've actually made all the stitches. All that's left is to weave it in the ends and add the tassels. But basically we're going to go through rep, uh, rows nine through 11, rep row four. So that means you come back to row four. It's spelled out right here, repeat row four. Follow the same instructions for all three of those rows. Rows 12 through 14, repeat row two. That is our single crochet row. So we come back and repeat our single crochet rows. And then finally we get to the finishing. So if we look at our finished mug rug here, make sure it's turned around the right way. We have a few rows of single crochet and then some rows of half double crochet. Then we've got our nice tall rows here of double crochet. Then it's back to half double crochet and then back to single crochet. So you'll get to experience all those stitches, but it's just as exactly as we've been doing here, just working into the top of the previous row. However, like I say, working to the top of that chain three is just a little bit different. So let's go ahead and make some more stitches together. For this row, let's go ahead and make some more double crochets. Again, I'm going to chain three, and that will count as the top of my first stitch there. There we go. So I want to go ahead and get that stitch marker right in the top chain 
under those top two loops so I can find it later. Just makes it a little easier. And then I'm gonna turn, then you can yarn over, find that next stitch. Remember when you're making double crochets and the chain three counts as the first stitch, we don't crochet into that first stitch, we come to the next one. Insert our hook, yarn over, pull up our, our loop, yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. So I'm just going to continue double crocheting my way across this row until I get to the very end there where we need to work into that chain three as if it were our stitch because it does count as our first stitch. Now, if you really don't like the look of that chain three, I think it's a big um, you know, sticking point for a lot of people. Like I say, there are lots of options out there. Um, after you've mastered the basic stitches, you can definitely check those out. Probably one of the simplest workarounds is to simply chain two and not count it as the first stitch and work a double crochet into that first stitch. But again, that's something um, you might encounter in a pattern. It might be something you need to do on your own, but that's something you'll need to put some thought into and decide uh, what you want to use for that first double crochet, whether it's a chain three and count it as your first stitch or a chain two and then go ahead and put an actual double crochet in there and just ignore that chain two hanging out on the side the same way we do those chain ones. Um, but again, it's totally up to you and something that'll come along a little bit later in your crochet career. So we've got our first 14 double crochets made here. We've got one more to go. And here's the top of that chain three. And this is where I think having that stitch marker is really handy, not only to help me know I've got one more stitch I need to make here, but also because I can sort of use that to help guide my hook a little bit. I inserted that stitch marker under those top two loops. So now I know I can put my hook right under those same two loops. There we go. When I make that double crochet and just go right into that top of that chain there, make that double crochet. You can see there, it worked right in there. So we've still got our 15 stitches made. So then I can go ahead and pull that stitch marker out and continue to use it as I work up all those rows. Now, the entire pattern is only 14 rows. And like I say, it's all single crochets, half double crochets, double crochets, then half double crochets and single crochets. So when you get to the end, it's time to break your, break your yarn, weave in your ends and add these fun tassels. Okay, so when you're ready to finish off your project, you're going to need just a couple more tools, a pair of scissors and a yarn needle. A yarn needle is a lot like your typical sewing needle. Sometimes they have bent ends like this, more often they don't. Um, either way is fine, just totally personal preference thing. But the big difference you're going to notice, it's got a great big eye. You have to have a big eye in order to fit the yarn through it, right? So th that's something you'll want to invest in eventually as well. Scissors, hopefully you already have the around, around the house here. So you can see here, I've got the um, loop of my last loop there of my last stitch still hanging out. I don't wanna pull that through or anything just yet. First, I wanna go ahead and cut the yarn. And again, I wanna leave a good six inches or so here at the end. So we go ahead and cut that and set the rest of our project aside. And that what I'm going to recommend you do is that you take that last loop there on your hook, yarn over with that tail end there and pull it through and then just pull it all the way through. Give it a little tug and then that end should be nice and secure. So now it's time to weave in those ends. We can go ahead and get that stitch marker out of there. We don't need those anymore. And we're going to go ahead and weave in these two ends right here. So what we want to do to weave in our ends is we're going to take, doesn't matter which one you do first, what order you do them in, take one of those ends and get it on your yarn needle. Now, the way I like to do this is just a silly personal habit, but it seems to work well, is I will actually fold the yarn over the end of my yarn needle, which gives me a nice little smooth bit there. It's a lot easier to get that to squish into the eye. So just a little personal tip there I've discovered over the years. So then what we're going to do is we're going to weave in these ends. What does that mean? We're essentially going to be sewing through our previous stitches to try and hide these ends and to keep them in there really securely. So I'm just going to take the end of my yarn and I just want to really carefully sort of go right inside some of those previous stitches. Now the goal is to hide this end so that when you look at the finished item, you can't see this end zigzagging around in there. So this is again, something that just takes practice like everything else. You just want to gently pull that through. Let's get that tail end through there as well. There we go. And you don't wanna to pull too tight because then let's see what happens. If we pull too tight, that's going crazy, right? We don't want that. 
if you do pull too tight, you can just sort of pull it back out there. But as we finish off these ends, that will get more and more secure. So just make sure you gently, just gently pull it. So that it's nice, you can tell it's smooth in there, but it's not pulling in there. And then continue to weave around. What helps a lot is to go in lots of different directions. But in particular, you want to try and double back on yourself at some point. So I'm gonna go ahead, pull this one down here a little bit down into that row, just real gently right inside that stitch. And then I'm going to go ahead and send this needle under these few stitches right here, okay? After I do that, I'm gonna pull them through here so that there's nice and tight without being pulling. What I want to do is I want to send this back through the other direction. And what I want to do is I've gotta catch it on something first, otherwise I'm just undoing what I've just done. But then I want to try and go through, and this is kind of a hard one to show, I want to try and go through that tail end. So I know like that little strand of yarn there was part of what I just pulled through. I want to pierce it with my needle, ideally in a couple places as I come back through, right there. So there are different yarn needles, some of them are sharper than others, which may help with this endeavor, but we just wanna pierce that yarn a couple times on the way back. And what that final pass is going to do is really sort of lock that yarn into itself so it doesn't wanna come back out. If I were to go through and try and pick that yarn end out with my yarn needle, I'd probably end up just making a big mess. This end is woven in. So we've still got this part sticking out here. So what you want to do now is go ahead and trim that off close to your fabric. It can help to give it a little tug so that when you cut it off close to the fabric, you can pull on that fabric, give it a little zhuzh, a little wiggle, and that end will tuck right back down in between those stitches. Now, the slipperier the yarn, the longer the end you'll need to weave in. The more you'll need to weave in because that yarn wants to slip back out. The um, fuzzier or grippier the yarn, for instance, something with some wool content where the yarn really wants to stick together, the less you'll need to do that because the yarn will stick together. But you really do want to take your time and weave in all your ends really nicely so that they don't come out of your finished project. They don't want, you don't want those ends to wiggle back out and start undoing your stitches because then you lose all your beautiful work. So after you've woven in all your ends, then for our little mug rug here, we're just going to add some really fun tassels to the corners. Okay, so each mug rug has four corners and I'm using three pieces of yarn on each corner. So we need to cut a total of 12 pieces of yarn, each approximately six inches long each. Now we're gonna trim those off after we attach them. So these don't have to be exactly six inches long. They can be however long, you know, is gonna give you a little extra room basically to trim it off later. You can definitely eyeball it. But let's go ahead and say we've got our 12 made here. I'm gonna go ahead and stop at three. So that's what we wanna use on each corner. And then I find the corner of the mug rug. Here are the ones I've already trimmed off. I took those off of this one. So the corners are just those stitches on the corners. We should have one at each corner there. Find that top V. And we're just going to go ahead and attach these there. So attach these really simple, really simple tassels here. We don't have to pre-make this sort of tassel. This is the sort of tassel you attach using your crochet hook, which is really great for this sort of project. What we want to do is insert your hook right in that stitch, right at the corner there, right under those top two loops where we want to attach our tassel. Then fold these pieces of yarn in half. See, you can see here I've got it folded right over my finger. And that fold goes right over our crochet hook, all three of those pieces. Then very carefully, pull all three of those pieces through that stitch. And this can take a couple tries sometimes. This is a lot of yarn to pull through one little stitch there. There we are. So now we've got these three pieces of yarn in a loop on our hook. Then you can do this either with your fingers or with your hook, whatever is easiest for you. But we want to pull these ends through that loop. So let's go ahead and try it with our hook here. You can just use our hook. And we can't really get all those pieces of yarn in there, but you can just sort of push it through or you can pinch through with your fingers, whatever's easiest for you. Just get those ends up through that loop. Then give them a little tug down. You can see there, we've got our pretty knot. So I like this side of the knot as opposed to this side. So in order to get this portion on this side, I have to come from this side with my hook. So come from underneath in order to get this portion on top. Once you've got that tugged on nice and tight, then you just go ahead and take your scissors and trim those ends off to whatever length you like. Oops, just try and get through all the strands there. 
and go ahead and do that on all four corners. And that's how you make the Learn to Crochet mug rug. So that's how to crochet the Learn to Crochet mug rug, a free pattern on mooglyblog.com. Again, please go to the link in the description. You're going to find both the right and left-handed video tutorials there. And if you scroll down a little bit below those, you'll find a link to the written pattern, which as I've pointed out in this video, has instructions in both crochet lingo and crochet terms, or in plain English rather. So the great thing about this pattern is you can learn to crochet along with this video and follow along with written pattern in both formats so you can learn how to read those crochet patterns as well. So I really hope you'll check it out and I hope you enjoy learning to crochet. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.